I am so excited to introduce you to Wayne Griffin. His book is called Elizabeth Taylor, My Celebrity Connection. And I can't tell you how much I love Elizabeth Taylor. So how exciting it is, one, that he really has this amazing connection that happened because I think he was pretty brave in how he reached out and just the stories about her. And I think even younger people can relate to some of those stories of Elizabeth Taylor. There was something magical about her. Wayne, thank you so much for doing this. It's my pleasure, Kate. Thank you for having me on board and for your time today. So what started your fascination with Elizabeth Taylor? Well, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, and I think it goes back to me as a gay man in the 80s and sort of not having, well, not having really parents that I sort of could come out to and knowing what she meant to, to the gay community, I sort of connected, I, I connected to her, I wrote to her, I actually came out to her in a letter. I mean, that's where it all began, but I mean, um, I had friends that had sent me postcards with pictures of her on and, and stuff like that previous to that. And so I'm like, well, who is this woman? She is just out of this world. I, I, I was just so mesmerised by her. And, you know, then I did the usual thing fans do and get all the movies and watch all the movies and wait for that first on-screen appearance to, uh, to just see that magnificent woman appear on the screen. It was, a, a, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Elizabeth Taylor movie or no, you just like them all? No, I don't like them all. No, there's there's some that aren't quite, you know, they, they don't meet the benchmark. But, you know, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? I love Cleopatra. I can get that out and watch it again and again and again. And just some of those one-liners in there are just a classic. Um, Giants, uh, Rain Tree County is a, is a favorite of mine. I'm usually... It, sometimes it depends too on my collection. I mean, what items do I have from those movies or that are associated to those movies will sometimes dictate to me what my favorites are. In your book, you talk about that. Tell us some of what you have in your collection and how this came to be, how it went from PR people, I'll call them assistants, sending you maybe something back like, a you know, hey, thanks for your, you know, um, interest in Elizabeth to it becoming more personal. Well, you know, there was a lot of that going on. There was a lot of writing. I mean, I remember writing for about four years. The first letter I got back was from a, a secretary or a, a PR person, and I wasn't happy with that. I wanted that connection. So, you know, eventually that did happen, and I was corresponding with Elizabeth directly. But, I mean, you know, I've got things in my connection in my collection that um, if, uh, stories, for example, in my book that come from her childhood friend, Ruth Culverhouse, that had shared some stories about growing up in the Taylor house because her parents were employed by the Taylors as chauffeurs and chauffeurs and, and the mother was a maid. So, you know, Ruth grew up with Elizabeth. So there's some stories in there about that and how George Culverhouse was the very first person to teach Elizabeth Taylor to walk, which, you know, that's her first steps to start and became, you know, began with him. Um, a picnic on Dick's River during Raintree County is a picnic basket a lady used to go on the set and, and quite often Elizabeth and some of the other members would join them and sit on the bank of the river and have a picnic from this wonderful picnic basket and a, and a blanket that was made 150 years ago by her great grandmother or something, you know, and there's other things where there's been lockets and things kept away in a bank safe and then, uh, you know, the person's passed away and handed it down through the family and these were gifted things from Elizabeth that she'd actually given to people during filming or, or stuff like that because she was a very giving person, you know. Yeah, for you to have all this memorabilia and to be able to go and look at whatever it might be, is do you feel like she's sort of still alive, that there's something about Elizabeth that you're connected more than the rest of us? Yeah, well, my, well look, I think, yeah, there is that. There is that definite, definitely that connection. Um, and the, the good thing about it is so sometimes if you can get an image or sometimes I get media coverage with her, like a cowboy hat she wore in 2009 to the Abbey Bar and Grill down the street from her home, coincidentally. Um, she's in the wheelchair with the hat on. I mean, and, and I've got that hat and I can, you know, in my book for the very first time, I believe a biography or a book of this sort doesn't use QR codes. And I've put QR codes through my book where we're talking about certain things. If she's won an Oscar for certain, you know, for something, there's a QR code and you can actually click on the QR code and you can 
she transforms out of the pages and becomes alive. And there she is at the Oscars receiving an Oscar, or there she is in the wheelchair wearing the hat, you know? So, and I get goosebumps thinking about it. And, I, and some of my friends go, oh my God, I've got goosebumps about this. And I've shown them, I've said, look, well, there's a picture there. Now let's turn it into reality. Let's click on the QR code and bring her alive. And why is, not? Why not? I agree with you. I think it's wonderful that you did that. Is there one story about Elizabeth that just really resonated with you? personal or professional, which I'm sure there's so many, but was is there one that you can hear over and over again and that you put in your book? I think I think one thing that resonates with me about her was her her her, her, her boss in business, her her determination to not just be another actor, not just be a plaything for studios to to do and and to um you know, show her sexuality and, and be who she really wanted to be. And, you know, I feel also that because she lost her father quite young, that maybe that's why she had, I was thinking this morning, why did she get married eight times? I mean, who's going to do that? But I mean, she loved people. She, she, you know, and I think, you know, minus the father figure earlier in her life is probably one of the reasons why she wanted that man constantly throughout her life. And she wasn't one to sort of just have boyfriends here and there and everywhere. She was a loving person. Who do you think her great love was? You mentioned the eight marriages. Who was her great love? Well, there was a toss up in there between Richard Burton and Mike Todd, really. I mean, who's to say? I mean, if Mike Todd didn't, you know, die in that plane crash in, in 50, 1958 or whatever it was, that um, they would have stayed together a lot longer than they did. I mean, it's hard to know, but I mean, the relationship with Richard, obviously, 10 years or so, and then the second marriage. So maybe Richard, I mean, they're, apparently they're selling her letters to Richard Burton at the minute. So her love letters. Um, and she was buried apparently with one of them. So I would say Richard Burton. I'd say they're up in, he they're up in heaven doing a sequel to Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. <laughs> Which is my favorite movie. And I love that you brought that up. Uh, I could watch oh, that over and over. She was brilliant in that movie. Yes, yeah, excellent. I mean, just brilliant. What, tell me more about the book and tell all of us more about the book. What else do you have in there? Well, look, it's, just, it's a biography. I and mean, there's been about 64 biographies on Elizabeth Taylor. So we don't want to drum play the same old music. Um, you still got to sort of tell the basic storyline about where she was born. And I mean, obviously I've intertwined things from her childhood and, and obviously information I got from her childhood friends and, and stuff like that and people that worked for her um so it's a general story of you know when she got married when she when she acted in a certain movie when she got sick all that type of stuff's in there but I think also it is um in there is the it's it showcases also her willingness to be a part of a fanship with someone like myself or she may have done exactly the same thing with lots of other people around the world but to take time out of her day and respond to 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 someone like me just shows another side of her and then there's obviously the other side of it which where I've interjected pieces of memorabilia so we may be talking about um let's say the blue the bluebird in 1976 and there she is in a in a um outfit going into the studio to film and we've got I've got that outfit so you'll see that outfit on another page so we're sort of blending the memorabilia through the story to bring it alive and then of course you know I've got the QR code to try that off but I mean I hope everyone else does exactly and you can get this book Barnes and Noble Amazon all yes things. Amazon Barnes and Noble this um I've, I've actually focused more on the American market not so much here in Australia so I think there's even 300 bookstores American wide that will will have the uh the copy and um it, it's going to Elizabeth's going to attend the LA Festival of Books on the 23rd and 24th and then she's going to be at the Miami Book Festival on the 19th to the 23rd of November so she's it's she's still out there she's everywhere so here's she the is. thing what was it like for you to write the book once you saw it I mean boom there it is in your it, we, we see it right behind you it's beautiful but once you get that copy you put it together this has been such a big chunk of your life what was that like it's a life's journey it's taken me 10 years it's like um, I look, I collected and collected for a long time and I was getting sort of my partner was going, you know, when are you going to stop this craziness and stop collecting all this stuff? This house is just 
a shrine to Elizabeth Taylor. I'm like, well, I'm going to stop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a book and I'll put all the pieces in the book and I'll tell a story and then I'll stop collecting. <laughs> that didn't happen. The collecting actually got worse. <laughs> um, so look, I, I, uh, in 2010, I sent her a manuscript, a uh, lovely um, satin bound manuscript of the book. Um, she read that, she got that. She sent me this beautiful comment or this beautiful card around, you know, how I had made her, her birthday so special and what a lovely tribute belt lavender book it was. Then coming, you know, then sort of five months later, she passed away. So she didn't actually get to see the book in its real form. So then sort of it's, it's sort of come and gone over the years and some sort of some people have done the wrong thing by it and some people have done the right thing and it's never been what I've wanted it to be it's got to be you know as her number one fan that I was declared by her I need to present it in a way that is fitting to the Queen of Hollywood so now and coincidentally it was a if she hadn't been in love it would have been her 90th birthday this year so what I did I released it on her birthday so in actual fact I've done a whole big loop because that letter that she wrote 10 years ago to say thank you for the lovely lavender book still uh, on my birthday still applies 10 years later when I released the book on her birthday. So it's a bit goosebumpy. It is goosebumpy. <laughs> it's the perfect place to end this. We could talk and talk and talk, but what a tribute to Elizabeth Taylor and what an amazing connection. You know, Elizabeth Taylor, my celebrity connection, that is a very big connection, well-written book. Excellent job, and it was great speaking with you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for having me, and, and you know, thank you for keeping the legacy of this wonderful woman alive. Wayne Griffin, thank you so much. Thank you.